Actually, it's good because the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit about me. So the guys who come late can miss that. That's fine. Um, I just want to tell you a little about who I am. My name is Robbie Ingebretson. Um, oh, I've got the wrong presentation up here. Okay. One second. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name's Robbie. <laughs> Sorry, I told you. My name is Robbie Ingebretson. Um, I, uh, I'm on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. My last name is Ingebretson, and that, that, you know, that's the lucky thing about having a crazy last name is there are, is not a lot of competition for it um, on Twitter. So, uh, at least if you're there early. So, um, I'm, uh, my, that's my Twitter handle. Um, I also blog, and this is my blog, and it's nerdplusart.com. Uh, and by the way, everything that I talk about today will end up there. So if you follow my blog, you'll be able to find slides or whatever um, I share with you today. Uh, and then I'll, I'll put a redirect. So if you go to nerdplusart slash mix10, that'll uh, take you to the right place. So I work for a little company called Pixel Lab. And when I say little, I mean actually very, very little. Because um, Pixel Lab, up to this point, has been a company of just me. So Pixel Lab is very, very small. Uh, our world headquarters are based in my backyard, actually. Um, in a uh, little office that we created. And um, so when we say that uh, you know, I am Pixel Lab, actually, and there, there's a lot of good about being a one-man shop. It's been really fun. I've been um, a one-man company for about a year and a half. But there are times when being a one-man shop is not as fun. And um, some of the problems with being a one-man shop are that you end up taking on um, you know, work by yourself. It's kind of lonely. You don't have people to share your thoughts with, bounce ideas off of. So I'm excited, actually, to mention today that Pixel Lab has just doubled in size right before your eyes. And Pixel Lab is now a company of two. So um, massive growth this year of 100%. And um, in fact, the other half of Pixel Lab is sitting here. Kevin is here. Hi, Kevin. And um, thanks. <laughs> And the, the reason I want to share that with you is we're also really interested in finding opportunities to work with you. So if there are people here who would like a um, chance to work on interesting projects, have some awesome uh, WPF or Silverlight skills with a Z, then uh, we would love to know about you. So definitely get in touch. Um, at Pixel Lab, we make very cool stuff. And we make it all out of pixels, right? That's the name. And maybe you've seen Kevin Button. Does anybody know that joke? That was an inside joke. Well, Google Kevin Button, and then you can laugh at Kevin and I. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, check out thinkpixelab.com, and that will be us. OK, well, let's uh, jump into the, uh, the rest of the presentation. Um, so uh, so I, I'm going to be very candid with you today. I think design is kind of hard, and um, I love it. I think design can change the world. I'm passionate about design. But especially when you're first trying to become a designer or you know, approaching design, uh, design is not easy. And I think even you know, as you become fairly expert, design continues to be fairly hard. So that's why today I have uh, given this um, presentation the name 10 Ways. Oh, cue the sound guy. Here, we'll go back. There we go. OK, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Okay, 10 ways that you can attack. Oh, come on, what's going on? Well, a design problem and win. There we go. So, didn't quite have the impact that I was hoping. But um, nevertheless, hopefully it felt impactful to you because it's something I'm really passionate about. I think that um, design is something that anybody can learn how to do. I really believe that, and I'm a good example of that. Um, I, my background is that I spent about a year studying design when I was in school, and then I quickly moved over and I um, have a computer science degree. And then I went and I worked at Microsoft for a little while, and while I was at Microsoft, I realized that as much as I loved what I was doing with my computer science degree, I sort of felt lopsided personally, right? Like in my life, I'd been doing a lot of design, and I missed it. And so I started looking for opportunities to do more and more design. Now, I'll be honest with you, though, after a year of design school, I was not an awesome designer. Especially because um, my design school, I'm not that old, by the way. I'm like, uh, I guess I'm 35. Um, but my design school training didn't really even involve computers. When, uh, so, you know, that's kind of how much the industry has changed in a short amount of time. Um, so, by the time that uh, I decided that I wanted to be doing more design, 
Um, and the, this is me again being very candid with you. I was sort of starting from scratch and I was learning a lot. And so the talk that um, I, I wanted to give today is the talk that I wish that um, I could give younger me, right? If I could go back, you know, seven or eight years uh, when I was looking at how design works and beginning to think deeply about design. Um, these are the things that I wish I could tell um, that younger version of me, which I'll introduce you to right now. <laughs> there I am. So that, the reason I will show you that is I want you to see my awesome Photoshop skills. <laughs> that is not me, by the way. <laughs> but I wish it were, because that guy is cool. <laughs> um, so, we are going to talk about, and I would do some karate moves for you, except I'd you know, be embarrassed, but we're going to talk about 10 awesome attack moves on design. And we'll talk about those in the context of uh, three apps, kind of two and a half. One of them only gets a little bit of coverage near the end. Um, so the first of those apps is an app called Books.Show. And by the way, none of these apps uh, are apps that you've seen before. You, we're, we will talk about Seismic, and you saw that just briefly. Um, well, actually, I guess some of the design stuff we'll talk about with Seismic happened in the first version of Seismic. So for Windows, the one that uh, we talked about at the PDC. Um, the two other apps that we're going to talk about are apps that you haven't seen before. And uh, one of them is Books.Show, and this is an application that I did with Microsoft for the uh, Windows 7 developer program. And this is an application that will be available to you to download for free um, as source code as well as just as a fun app to have. Um, and it'll be available, I think, within the next couple of weeks. It was actually, we were hoping to have it available now, and I think it's done. I think that just in the, um, in the craziness of Mix, we didn't actually get it pushed out. But it's coming up. So let me just show you that app really quickly. And you know what? I have to admit that I just thought of something sort of bad about this, which is that um, this application runs great at 1024 by 768, but I have only run it at 1024 by, I always tilt it, right? Like I've been tilting it the whole time. Didn't occur to me until just now that you can't really tilt the presentation screen, right? So it's going to feel a little compressed, but that's okay. Um, so let me drag this app over so you can see it. Okay, here we go. So, oh, that's not too bad, actually. We can deal with that. So um, this is an app called, application called Books.Show. Really cool application, and I was very, very excited to be part of it. Um, reading, as you know, is something that we're all very excited about right now. Reading on devices. I just bought a Kindle. I can't put it down. Um, this is a, an application that we built in WPF using a technology like Flow Document and stuff like that to uh, take books from the Gutenberg project and allow you to read them on your PC for free, right? So this is an application that you can download. You've got source. Um, so I'll just kind of give you a tour really quickly. So um, this is what we call the library, and you have all the books in here, and you can kind of sort through those. Um, the, uh, you can also filter through those, so you, we could say, you know, I guess look at authors, for instance. Um, Charles Dickens is a guy who I know has some books in here. Um, you can uh, then choose a, a book. Here, let's go back to the, to the top. Um, so I was gonna, here's Pride and Prejudice. So, um, so you can choose a book, you bring it in here, uh, it's feeling kind of compressed right now. Um, it shows you what page I was last reading, right? And you can see I've got a bookmark here, I've also added some a highlight. Um, you can obviously, you know, navigate between pages. Um, we have kind of this fun visualization as you're, as you're scrubbing through to see where you've landed. Um, anyway, it's a small app. It's not a big app, um, and that was kind of by design, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I want to tell you a little bit about the process that we went through for um, when we were creating this. And I'll show you some more examples of it in just a second. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about, design attack move number one, and that is find inspiration. So um, I'll tell you a, a story. So something you might not know about me, actually very, very few people know about me, including my wife, I don't think even knows this about me, is I know karate. Um, I know karate because I studied under a, uh, a guy. He was um, probably the, the best sensei at our community center. Um, and I studied under him for eight weeks on Saturdays when I was seven. And um, the main thing that I took away from that experience is that uh, you should only attack somebody in self-defense and that the attack needs to come from within. So that's how we're going to approach design inspiration. This is a very internal 